Next talk we have is from Chris uh, about the AOSP build system. Over to you, Chris. Okay, thank you. So, um, yeah, welcome to this talk. I'm going to try and demystify the AOSP build system. Don't guarantee that I'll succeed, but I'm going to try. Uh, skip that. Um, so I'm going to start off with a kind of high-level view of the AOSP build system for those people who may not be totally familiar with it. Um, and then I want to break it down into the various components. So I want to talk about Soong, Kati, Ninja, and then I'll finish off with Bazel. So let's see how this goes. Um, so Android is a large chunk of code. Um, I counted well, I, I used a C lock to count the lines of code. 50 million lines of code, uh, mostly C++, uh, big chunk of Java, bit of Kotlin, bit of Rust. And you need a build system to build all this thing. So uh, this is Google, so they wrote their own build system. Um, but the way it works, if you're familiar with, for example, Open Embedded or Build Root, you'll see that there are a lot of similarities. A build system is a build system is a build system. They all basically have to do the same thing. Um, this talk is based on Android 13, and so a big warning is that, first of all, the build system does tend to evolve release by release, and we know ahead of time that Android 14 is going to have some big changes in it as they begin the transition towards Bazel, but we'll come to that later. Um, but the full details of that aren't really apparent to me at the moment, so like I say, you'll have to invite me back next year to talk about the Bazel version of this. Um, note at the bottom there in, in small text, um, so the AOSP build system only builds the AOSP operating system and the kind of upper levels. It does not build a kernel, it does not build a bootloader or any other bits and pieces. Consequently, when you get AOSP from your favorite silicon vendor, uh, they will have bundled with uh, the AOSP build system their own build system on top of that, which is going to build their kernel and the bootloader, and resulting in some truly weird stuff. I wrote stuff. You can make up your own word. So yeah, it's, it's not entirely ideal. However, so first of all, going through just the, the quick top level thing, just a quick recap uh, to make sure we're all on the same page. So the AOSP source code is a large collection of Git repositories, um, over 1,100 now. Um, so you begin the process, you get repo, of course, and then you use repo init to go get the manifest, which is an XML file, which lists all the actual uh, Git trees you want to clone. So we do repo in it with all that kind of stuff. Optionally, giving a, a, a tag, um, and in this case, Android 13, release 35. That just downloads the manifest. That's a fairly quick thing to do. And then you do a repo sync, and that will then go through, iterates through the, uh, the manifest, and does essentially a git clone for each one of those 1,100 trees. So it's going to take a while. And in Android 13, it's about 150 gigabytes that you download. Um, yeah, notice that the uh, contrast here to, say, Buildroot and Yocto. With Buildroot and Yocto, um, basically, it, it downloads on demand. So as you download, uh, as, as, you, it, as it goes to build uh, a module, it will first of all download the code and then, and then compile it. A, a re repo and ASP don't work like that. You basically go get everything in one go. Even if you don't need those things, you're going to get the entire thing, including BSPs for stuff you may not gonna be going to touch. So that's one reason why it's, why it's so big. Um, then you set up the shell environment, so you source the script, uh, build m setup, and this includes a whole bunch of shell functions, one of which is lunch, and so the lunch uh, command allows you to select a build target, basically a BSP. Um, so in my example, I'm, uh, I'm actually building a cuttlefish uh, target uh, for x86 phone. The procedure is the same, whatever target you choose. Uh, these targets then, they are, uh, they are defined in Android product NK files. So if you go looking through the device directory of AOSP, you'll find there's a whole bunch of Android uh, product MK files. That's what populates the lunch menu. 
And so the particular example for the uh, Cuttlefish phone I'm using, um, that actually comes about because of that file there, device Google Cuttlefish Android products MK. And within there, you'll find common, common lunch choices equals da da da. Okay, so that's how it becomes selectable as a product. So you run lunch, select your target, and then you build it. So building is very easy. You type M return. That's the easiest part of the whole process. Um, and then uh, have a coffee and have another coffee and take a vacation <laughs> because the build is going to take, well, if you have powerful hardware, it may take about an hour. Uh, if you have more normal hardware, it's going to take four hours, six hours, whatever. So plenty of time to, to take up a hobby and, and, and learn some crocheting or something. So when, um, when it's finished, oh no, sorry, stepping back a little bit. Yeah, so how does it know what to build? So you selected uh, a target, cuttlefish in my case, um, and the, 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 the packages that get built are all uh, bundled together into this makefile variable called product underscore packages. And if you look through the various um, components that, that make up the entire build, you will see uh, things like product packages plus equals and then a list of modules So cuttlefish service vsoc input service blah 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 um, and if you actually um, You can actually dump out uh, Variables you can use the uh, the tool get build var for example get build var product packages that will then list all the product packages that are in your product and it's not particularly easy to read because it's basically one big long line because the, the, um, the names are just separated by spaces, not by new lines. Um, but if you do that on a typical uh, product, you're going to find that it consists of somewhere between 900 and 1,000 individual packages. So when you type M, it's amongst other things, it's uh, iterating through product packages and it's doing a build on each one of those modules. And then it all finishes eventually, and uh, it generates stuff in the out target product product name directory, um, which in the case of Cuttlefish turns out to be VSOC x86-64. And if you look in there, amongst other things, you'll find these are the image files. So there's the boot image, there's a vendor image, there's a, there's a system image. And then typically you use a uh, fast boot or something to flash this onto your target device, and then you go away and test it. Okay, so in a couple of slides, that's essentially how Android build works. These Android modules then, they are currently defined in two different ways. You can either define them in android.bp files. So BP stands for Blueprint. Uh, Blueprint is a language specific to AOSP as a way of defining um, a, a module. This is basically a recipe. So if you want to think back into Yocto terms, this is somewhat similar to a BB file. And in Android 13, we have something in, in, excess, in excess of 8,000 Android BP files. There is also a legacy format, android.mk, uh, which has been deprecated for quite some time, but there are still a lot of them around. Um, I counted them. There's a, just a little bit less than a thousand Android MK files in AOSP at the moment. Um, so you find both of these things, and when you do the build, it basically will iterate through all of the uh, BP and MK files, and it will build whatever it is you specified in your product packages. So now I want to dive a little bit uh, and, and look under the hood or behind the curtain or whatever it is and see what actually is going on when you do this build. So it turns out that there are three components to building AOSP. There's Soong, there's Kati, there's Ninja. Um, it's kind of complicated. So um, I've got a graphical uh, example to kind of help you and kind of put this all together. So first of all, we we'll start with CARTI. Uh, so CARTI is a genetically engineered augment, and she is a follower of Khan Ninian Nunian Singh. 
Okay, this is Khan Noonien Singh, uh, but he has nothing to do with this story, so... Instead, we need to talk about uh, another, another Noonien. How many Noonians can there be? Uh, this is uh, Dr. Noonien Soong. Uh, so Dr. Noonien Soong is an AI genius, inventor of data. Okay, this is data. Uh, so data is an Android, but not as we know it, or at least we don't know. I mean, does data run Android TM? I, I'm not quite sure. Uh, it's, it's not made clear in the, in the uh, TV show, series. Uh, the other thing is, it's the same actor. I mean, phew, that's cheap. They could, at least, they could at least employ a different actor. Anyhow, uh, data is also not part of this story, so we can forget about him. Uh, and then the third character is uh, Ninja. So Ninja turns out, uh, the, well, the Ninja are a cast of uh, Japanese soldiers, most notably known for uh, assassinations and sp spying and all the other kind of uh, daring do's. So those are three characters. We have Kati, we have Soong, we have Ninja. Okay, and so essentially uh, Kati and Soong are passing information to Ninja. And then Ninja, with some deft swordplay, is creating for you an android from maybe a tree stump and quickly carve it. So there you go. I hope that helps. Um, <laughs> everything becomes much clearer now, I think. So how do we get here? Um, so if you look back to the first um, publicly available uh, source code release of Android, which was the Cupcake 1.5 release, 2008. Actually, it may have been 2009, strictly speaking. Um, so originally, it was all uh, uh, done, driven by GNU Make. So the Android build system was uh, a bunch of makefile fragments, .mk files, and it's, th th there's a whole thing about whether it's a recursive make or make, or make file fragments. Go Google or search, using your favorite search engine, uh, recursive make files considered harmful. Anyhow, initially it was, it was just make file based and it was fairly simple and, and, and not particularly surprising. But it turns out that make doesn't really scale that way to really large projects. So as Android got bigger, uh, the limitations of GNU make became apparent. So slow to start up, the processing of the internal logic is, 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 is not brilliant. Um, there's no pro progress in, in indication, so you may remember in the early days you type make and then you had no clue as to how many cups of coffee you, 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 could, you had time to go drink. So you had to keep coming back after each cup of coffee. Is it finished yet? Oh god no. And then another coffee. So now we do have progress indication which gives you some ideas to uh, whether it's nearly time to stop drinking coffee. So um, yeah, so in uh, Android 7, the uh, Nougat, um, they introduced Kati and, and Ninja to overcome those particular problems. So essentially uh, with Kati, uh, Kati basically parses the MK files, so Android, ma uh, sorry, GNU make is, is no longer involved. Kati parses all of the .mk files, generates a Ninja manifest, and then Ninja works through the manifest, uh, does all the work, and it gives you a nice progress bar. So that's good. Um, and then for mysterious reasons, uh, in, in 2017, in the uh, Oreo release, uh, they added in Soong. Uh, so Soong is its own thing. Um, it has its own format, blueprint, um, but it still generates uh, Ninja manifests. In fact, it also, actually, it doesn't quite even do that. It actually generates a make file, then Carti processes the make file into Ninja manifest, and then Ninja does the, the actual work. Um, I think the, the original intention of Soong was that Soong would take over the entire uh, um, process. Um, but for various reasons, which I, I really don't understand, uh, it kind of stalled and hasn't, hasn't quite achieved that. Um, so here we are in 2023 20, uh, with the upside down cake uh, release, uh, Android 14, coming along in a couple of months' time. And the big idea now is to add in a fourth component called Bazel. So how do you solve a problem with software? Uh, you add another layer. So hopefully, 
um, the uh, Android developers will follow through and actually use Bazel to replace all the other components, which, as I understand it, is the, is the aim. So let's see what happens. Okay, so, uh, like I said, I want to go through, not in particularly great detail, but I want to give you uh, a little bit of an idea what each one of these uh, components actually does. Starting with Soong. So, as I said, Soong reads Android.bp files. Uh, they're written in Blueprint, which is a, quote, JSON-like uh, language, and they are also quite similar to the format of Bazel build files. One of the key things about Blueprint and Soong is that the, the Blueprint files do not implement any logic. They are, quote, declarative, unquote. So, in other words, they're just a, a bunch of name value uh, assignments. That's, that's all you get in the Blueprint file. So, the logic is actually implemented separately in Soong modules, which are written in the Go language. And uh, we'll come to that in a moment or two. Uh, so, the code for Soong, you'll find it in the build Soong directory. Dollar .asp, by the way, is just my shortcut for wherever your ASP code-based uh, route is. And there's some documentation. Um, this bit is looking at um, the startup. And actually, the, the main thing that I was, have been worried about for a while is, when I type make, how come it runs soon? So I eventually uh, dug this out. Uh, it's a little bit hard to read, and we don't need to read all of it. But the main thing is that uh, there's a bit of logic there that says, um, if you're at the top level, then when you type make, it actually runs M. Well, it actually runs um, um, da, 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 sing, Soong UI, and Soong UI actually does the, uh, in, invokes the, the build process. So if you're at the top level, if you're in, in $AOSP, M and make are identical. If you're in any other directory, then make actually does do make, which is confusing. And we also have these variants. So as well as M, we have MM and MMM. Um, so if you type M or make, uh, that will build the entire thing, um, and it builds um, seeking towards a, a target called Droid. So the default uh, target is called Droid. If you just want to build a single module, then you can just change directory into the directory which contains the Android BP or Android MK file, and you can type MM. And that will then run the build system with the target of just that one module. So usually that's much faster than doing a complete build. And then we have the three M's, uh, kind of similar, except now you can give one or more directories as a parameter, and it will essentially CD into each one of those directories and run MM in each individual directory. So the driver for the whole thing is Soong UI. So when you type M, MM, MMM, or make, you always end up in Soong UI, and that is uh, what actually then runs the, the various jobs. Um, Soong UI takes uh, a, a command line parameter, so you can actually run it from the command line if you wish. Um, but it has basically these three modes. It has make mode, which is basically what happens when you type M. It has dump var mode, which is what happens when you type uh, get build var. And it also has dump vars mode, um, which is actually used internally with, uh, to generate the, the variable list, which um, CAR-T uses later on. Um, quick complaint to anybody who may be listening from Google, for example. Um, it'd be really great if dump var mode will take a wildcard or something. I really would like to do, type uh, dump var mode and, and, and give some kind of uh, regular expression, um, but it doesn't. Um, okay, help with make or M. You can type M help and it gives you the list of possible, well, no, it gives you some hints about possible targets. Common goals are so you can do M clean, which just deletes the entire uh, M di uh, out directory. Uh, we have droid, which is the default target and some other things which you can read from the slide yourself. When you run M, uh, if you don't give a minus J option, uh, it will choose uh, as many jobs as you have processors plus two. 
Again, the plus two is a little bit mysterious, um, but if I run this, say, on an eight core machine, it's actually going to run uh, 10 jobs. So it's equivalent to minus J10. Um, here's a very quick look at an Android BP file, just in case you've never seen one before. Um, so this is a CC binary. So CC binary, so this is the type of module we're going to build. So it could be uh, Android app is another one or, or Java library or whatever. So that is the, the, the type of thing we're going to build. In this case, a binary compiled from C and C++ code. Uh, every module has a name, in this case, logcat. And as somebody was talking about just now, that name has to be unique throughout the global namespace. So you cannot have two modules with the same name. Kind of makes sense unless you use namespaces, but that's another topic. Um, list of source files, list of libraries, list of C flags. So that is going to invoke the cross compiler. It's going to build logcat and it's going to install it by default into the out directory into system bin logcat. So at this level, it seems pretty simple. A uh, quick note about the dependencies. So when you write Android BP file, first of all, there are implicit dependencies on any libraries. So since here we are linking with libbase, libprocessgroup, um, those are implic uh, implicit dependencies. So the system's clever enough to realize that we need to build libbase and libprocessgroup before we can build uh, logcat. And then you can add in explicit dependencies using the required keyword. So you give a list of modules. These modules will be built before it builds this module. Um, so I, I, I said that the, the, um, the CC binary is, is a type of module. Um, and here are some other examples, which I'm going to skip over. Oh, yeah. If you want to see the um, information, the documentation about the various modules you can build, uh, then you can type m soon underscore docs and that will then compile the, uh, the, the, the documentation and then you can go read the file if you're looking at soon docs, soon build HTML. That then lists all the various module types and all the various attributes each module type uh, can, can have. Uh, so these module types, like I say, the, the logic is written in, in Go. Um, so here's an example. If you grip through the, well, first of all, the, the, the source code for, for Soong is, is in uh, build slash Soong. If you have a look through that, you'll find things like this. So I have register module type, CC binary, and then binary factory is the uh, subroutine that's actually going to do the, the, the processing. Um, there are, uh, by my count, there, there are over 300 module types in Android 13. Uh, and the fact that there's been quite an explosion of different module types over the last several releases. And somebody was discussing just in the presentation before about the possibility of, uh, of, of doing certain things with, with Android BP files. Um, and yeah, if you actually want to do anything other than just the, the, the simple stuff, then you would have to add in a plugin uh, and define your own uh, module type. So when you run Soong, um, so you, you'll see that it's running Soong. It actually appears uh, as, a, as a line on, on the, on the uh, one of the first things you type after typing M. Uh, essentially, it is um, writing uh, this file called build.ninja. And it says, analyzing BP files and generating ninja file at blah, blah, blah. So this is a big file. So it's, it's, a, big, it's a text file but it's usually um, yeah, between five and 10 gigabytes. So that's why it takes a little, little while to complete this stage. Um, and also it has to regenerate this whenever you change anywhere in, this, in the system, if you change a single Android BP file, that is gonna force it to regenerate the entire um, build.ninja file. Now the interesting thing then, if you go look into that file, um, it basically has build rules for every single Android BP file. And that's because at this point, Soon doesn't know what the target is. Uh, only only Carty knows what the target is that we're trying to build. So Soon just blindly goes through every single Android BP file it can, it can find, 
put some build rules into this uh, um, build.ninja file. Uh, so even if, the, there are un if there are components that you're no never going to use, it still has to generate the build rules for them. Um, it also generates um, a dot make file, Android dash whatever, uh, which is user's input to Carti later on. Oh, I meant to delete that slide. <laughs> okay, so th there are some. Let me just go. Yeah, okay, T TBD, describe what you can find here. I, di I didn't do that bit. So there are some log files. Um, I'll leave you to work out what's in them. Um, I mean, the thing is, is, is extensively logged, but the contents of the log files is not 100% obvious. And I was trying to find uh, a kind of definitive reference as to what is in the log files, but I couldn't actually find it apart from reading the code. And I ran out of time reading the code. Okay, so how are we doing? Oh, okay, um, I better speed things up a little bit. So that was soon. Let's talk about Carti. So Carti is a GNU Makefile clone. It uh, parses the, the, these .mk files and generates um, the Ninja manifests. Uh, here's a typical Android.mk file. Um, this is similar to, to functionality of the BP file we looked at um, a couple of slides back. And, oh yeah, comment at the bottom, looks a lot like build root. Yeah, this is essentially how build root works. Uh, again, you, uh, there are dependencies, uh, there are implicit dependencies, libraries and such like, and you can add in your own explicit dependencies, in this case with a required, local required modules. Oh yeah, weird thing, uh, because of the way it works, uh, you cannot have a dependency from a dot MNK, uh, an android.mk file to an android.bp file. So you can do it the other way, uh, but mk files can't have dependencies on modules defined in bp files. So when you run, uh, I've confused Ninja and Carti, this should say Carti outputs. So uh, Carti generates a Ninja man manifest uh, called something.ninja, for example, build ASP, CF, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and this contains the build rules for all of the .mk file stuff. It's still quite a big file, so it's less than a gigabyte, but it's uh, quite a few hundred megabytes. So that then brings me to Ninja. So Ninja is basically stitching all this stuff together. Um, skip that. So Ninja is its own build system, um, although it's not intended to be, to be the, the, the Ninja uh, rules are not intended to be, be kind of human, written by humans. They're mostly generated by uh, tools such as uh, Ninja. Um, but there's a good, quick idea as to what, what, what is in Ninja. So we have uh, some variables, for, such as C flags. We have a rule called CC, which tells you how to compile uh, a, a component. And then we have a dependency. So build foo.o depends on foo.c, and it's going to use the CC rule to, to build it. That's basically what it is. Um, so Ninja is started from Soon UI. And I dig this out because I, I, it's, it's kind of interesting to see how this, uh, this kind of rolls out. So it's, uh, it, you can see the, the target there. So the default target is Droid. Uh, you can see the parameter, the minus J parameter I gave uh, because I wanted to limit it to 16 jobs. And it is um, going to process the file, uh, combined ASP, cuttlefish, whatever, uh, .ninja. If you go look into that file, it is uh, this little file that uh, lower down the slide. It is running a sub ninja on all the various other ninja files that have already been generated. So the first two were generated by Carti, and then the, the last one, the build.ninja, was generated by Soong. Okay, so in that way, it brings all the ninja files together. It knows what the target, it, it, target is, it's Droid, so it can work out the dependency tree, it can build the whole thing. Um, interesting little thing I, I, that um, I discovered is that you can actually run Ninja directly. Uh, Ninja has uh, some useful tools. 
So one of the things that I've always wondered is how do you generate, uh, how can you see the dependencies? Uh, so you can do this by calling ninja minus t, um, uh, minus t query. Uh, in this case, I'm doing a query on logcat and it gives me the dependencies on the logcat module. So we have two lists, we have the input dependencies. So these are things that logcat depends on and we have the output dependencies. So these are the things that depend on logcat. So that's quite useful. Pushing a little bit further, you can actually get it to draw a graph of this. So uh, minus T graph uh, generates a dot dot file. Then you convert the dot dot file to a, for example, a, a PDF. Not as helpful, helpful as I had hoped. <laughs> um, maybe I could tweak this a little bit. Um, but yeah, send, send me patches if you know a better way of doing this. And, oh, we didn't quite well, actually. Okay, so that was uh, Ninja. Final thing, I've got a couple of slides on Bazel. Like I say, Bazel is still a little bit upcoming. So um, we don't know for sure exactly how it's going to be deployed because it's not, in, it's not, you know, it's not, uh, it's not released yet. However, um, the eventual uh, goal, as I understand it, is to replace all of those things, Kati Soon and Ninja, with one tool called Bazel, um, which in theory should be a good thing, um, so long as they actually do that. And it should speed the build time up a little bit, particularly the start of the build. So all this messing around, generating .ninja files, uh, most of which you don't need, and then generating make files and then reprocessing them in, in Kati, it's a little bit crazy, really. So if this works, then this will be a, a great improvement to the Android build system. So my understanding then is that we will see the first deployment of this in Upside Down Cake. Um, and it's going to be gradually rolled out, I believe, over the next few releases. So maybe, maybe uh, in, in three or four years time, we'll have a completely Bazel based build. Right now in uh, Android 13, the only bit uh, of the build process, which is which is completely done in Bazel, actually is the kernel. So I kind of skipped that a little bit. But the, if you go down, download the Android Common Kernel, the ACK, um, there is a, a Bazel um, uh, set of Bazel files there, and you can build it using Bazel. And there are some references. Bazel in one slide. So um, this is so much as I managed to discover. Uh, in, in the short time on the plane over as I, was, as I was writing this stuff. So, yeah. How do you know it's Bazel, first of all? If you look for these two, two files, if you see a workspace file in uppercase and a build file, you're probably dealing with Bazel. So the workspace file, this defines the workspace, basically the top level directory. And um, then the build files, these essentially are, are the rules. And um, then the, the, sorry, these are, these are equivalent of the BP files. And then there's a Bazel logic is put into .bcl files. Um, the language is called uh, Starlock, apparently. So yeah, the um, looking at the master branch, uh, if you do a build of the master branch, you'll see that Bazel has replaced Ninja, but we're still using Soong and Kati to uh, feed information to uh, to Bazel. And I've got a couple of minutes free. Yeah. So there you go. So that, that is my interpretation of the Android build system. Does anybody have any questions? Yes, uh, oh. thank you. Um, at the end, you said um, the kernel will be built by Bazel. Uh, will it replace the, the scripts uh, for the GKI uh, when we, we want to build your own kernel? There are lots of scripts based on the GKI architecture with a common kernel and specific kernel? Yeah, basically it will. So um, in Android 13, the, the, the official way of building the kernel is still to use the build.sh uh, script. Yes. But there is also a Bazel build mechanism, and you can invoke a Bazel build, Bazel blah, 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 and, it, and that works as well. Um, I think in Android 14, the uh, build.sh script will disappear, and then Bazel will be the only option.
But the GKE will be the same. GKI will be the same. The GKI is the same. I mean, it, it, in theory, it produces the same the same binary. It does the same thing uh, under the hood. Um, is Zoom actually built as part of the build process? So if you add new rules to that, um, do you have to rebuild a custom version of Zoom and invoke that? Or do you just change it in the source tree and it will work automatically? Um, yeah, how do you add modules? OK, I'm going to have to say I've never actually done this. Um, but my understanding is you can just add in the module and it is controlled. I mean, it's essentially soon being built soon. So you should be able to modify the, the or add, add, add in your, doc, uh, your own uh, .go rules, .go files, add them to the appropriate Android VP file, rebuild everything. It should rebuild soon with your changes in. Has so anybody here actually done that? Can you confirm that I've got this right? Okay. Okay, right. So, uh, answer from the audience is yes, it, that, that's basically how it works. Anyone else? Yeah, thanks for the, for the talk, quite interesting. Um, as someone who's also patched some parts of the song things for some special task we had in another project, um, you talked about the yeah, modules and uh, you called it plugins for, for song. Do you know that if there is something similar uh, in Basil? Um, plant or actually there ah well you're, you're stretching my uh, my my knowledge a little bit but again my understanding is that the logic that used to be or is currently impl implemented in go is instead implemented in uh, in Starlock in, in these .bzl files and um, it says um, Starlock is a Python like language so it's a scripted language so that there's no compilation part I guess is the important bit there so yeah, I mean these are a little bit like um, BB dot class files in in, uh, in in Yocto. Uh, do the BP and uh, Android dot MK files live in the various source directories as downloaded at the as Gits? Yeah, so there's, there's, uh, when, you, when you write uh, a module in Android, uh, the BP or MK file is in the same directory as the code you're trying to compile. So does that mean you have to maintain multiple build systems for your component if it's used outside of Android as well? Um, it depends which Android versions you are targeting. Um, but assuming you're targeting anything since Android 8-ish, then an Android BP file should be sufficient. But if I want to build the same code outside of Android? Um, oh, sorry. Yeah, I'm, I'm misunderstanding your question. Um, sorry, you, you can't, basically. So the Android build system is hermetic, meaning uh, basically the Android build system only sees, sees the stuff within the Android build top directory. So you can't, you can't separately compile a module without building the entire thing. That, that just doesn't work. What, what probably what you mean is that if you have an external application, like what, what I did in the past or an external library, you usually have, for example, the, the classical make file there, and to build inside the Android, uh, you pull the source code in and add something like an Android MK or an Android.bp, and then call the make file itself, something like that. So you have to add an additional build system if you want to have an existing module, you want to build it inside the Android and outside. Okay. Yeah, no, th thank you. Yeah, that, 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 that right. helps. So, so typically, the, that kind of stuff is done in, say, Android Studio. You build an APK in Android Studio, then you include it into ASP as a binary. Um, that, that's typically how it works. And you say that you cannot have dependencies between the MK target and BP target. Mm -hmm. Is this bidirectional or only one to the other? Because I so think that is the droid, the, the, the first, the, the, the less dependent one is droid, and then you have, should have dependency on both of them, something like that. Yeah, I'm, 
I only know that it doesn't work. <laughs> so if, if you have an Android MK file and you want to have a dependency on something that's declared in an Android.mk file, that definitely doesn't work. Um, I haven't quite got to the exact reason why that is so. Okay, maybe because there are two different tools that calculate the dependencies. I think it's Cathy something to do with the way that Ninja, you know that, that sub Ninja slider slow showed, I think it's something to do with the order in which those .ninja files are included. Um, but I've not had a chance to verify that. Okay, thanks. Thank you, Chris. Uh, if that's it. Okay. Oh, and don't forget to come along to the bath 2 o'clock this afternoon. <laughs>